Welcome to Cherry's World Podcast. It is season four, y'all, and I'm going to heat it up a little bit today, okay? I am your host, Cherry Johnson. Mr. Courtney Blackman might pop out for a time of time, but he is the producer and my co-host. Disclaimer, today the show is going to be hot. It is going to definitely be R-rated. It might end up being X-rated. So it is for mature audiences only. If you have children in the room, it is time to either pause or come back to this video later. Or maybe you just need to turn me off because I am not that little girl from Punky Brewster today, okay? I am the 46-year-old grown mother who um, is in a relationship, you know? So today I'm going to be talking to a woman who is passionate, professional, sensual, intelligent. Those are just a few words to describe her sexual freedom. She is an intimacy coach, Miss Camilla Davis. She helps guide people on a journey to uncover, explore, and enhance the relationship through various of flavors of pleasure. When I say that, I am saying that she is a sexologist. She is a marriage and relationship coach. She's a transformation coach. She is a licensed exotic blueprint coach. She is a Tantra practitioner. She is a Reiki master. She's also going to tell us about some vagina steaming. And I am really interested in learning more about orgasmic meditation. So you don't want to miss the show. It's going to get really good. Miss Camilla Davis is also going to talk to me about female ejaculation. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> the only podcast coming through your beat stereo is Cherry's World, so let's go around like a merry go. Plug your phone in, make sure it got a full battery. Download it Wednesday, listen to it Saturday. She cover all topics, whatever you after. She got ball players, authors, doctors, actors, rappers, singers, entrepreneurs, divas, leaders, Androids or Apple. Turn up your speakers. Trying to shoot my shot like the vaccine Whether it's Cherry or Maxine Whether the podcast or acting She that queen P-Y-T, you know what that mean Saw you on TV and touched the screen Touch on you, I plead Lil C has got a crush on you It'll mean the world to get a blush from you Teaspoon to me, leave you sleep like Robitussin do So your resume and your education is so extensive I don't even really know where to start. I have so many questions. I took some questions from Instagram. Okay. I hope you don't mind. Let me take my pretzels off of them because people, we want to know stuff. Okay. First of all, how did you get started? Did it start with relationship first and then turn into sex or like, how did you just become a sexologist and stuff? Well, I, I joke and say I came out of the womb this way. Um, I, I really did. Like I have always been fascinated about love, sex, relationships, and I was in high school helping friends before I was even having sex. So whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you were giving sex advice in high school. Yes. How, how did that work? It was just, you know, people were going through relationships and things like that. And I just read everything. Like I was reading stuff and I was just like, just really like. It just, it just did something for me. Again, it was just, it was so natural for me. And so I always joke with my mom. I'm like, I came out this way. Like I just, you know, and so, yeah, I was giving out advice and helping people through stuff and I wasn't even having sex. And I used to like, it's funny because I was fascinated by penises. So I used to draw penises in high school and just be like, I was just really, really like fascinated by, by that. But, you know, I grew up in a very conservative Christian home. We didn't talk about this stuff. And especially in the black community, we don't kind of, we don't talk about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? We don't, and especially in the church. So I had my own shame and conditioning that I had to work through. And I was like, I, there's no way that my family's going to support me like doing this. So like I went a completely different path and worked in social services for over 20 years and did various different things. And I was just like, you know what, like towards the end, I was like, I need to follow my passion. Like my passion is, is just like sex and sex education. And, and, you know, and I'm like, yeah, like, and I saw everybody like at work and everybody was unhappy at work. And I was like, damn, these people just need to get fucked. Like what the hell? Like what's, that's just kind of the feeling that I had. Right. Yeah. So I finally, I left my 
you know, my, my job. And I decided to start this on my own and go out on my own. And I remember telling my family and friends, and they was like, well, it's about time. We knew this about you. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> like, I was like, I thought that they were going to like shame me or I was going to, you know, especially your mom. Like I was like, mom. And she was like, okay, that's fine. If that's what you want to do. And if that's what you're passionate about, I was like, really? Well, I should have did this shit a long time ago, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I love it. So you were infatuated with penises. I have to ask, was it the different shapes, sizes, colors? What was it? It was all of that. It was just, they look so different. And I don't know, I'm not the best drawer, but I would just try to draw stuff. And I was just like, it was just, they just look so different. I was just so fascinated by it. I was, again, I never even touched one, never was like, you know what I'm saying? But I was just like, so fascinated by it. Yeah. What's your zodiac sign? Aquarius. Okay, I had to ask. I'm a Scorpio. Oh, really? Oh, Scorpio. Okay, right. <laughs> so they be sleeping on their Aquarius. They think that we, uh, I'm just letting y'all know. Look. <laughs> no. Um, th- yeah, my heart is, belongs to Aquarius, so I get it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, so, so you said your uh, mom, how, how'd your dad feel about it? Well, my dad is deceased, so it wasn't, you know, that wasn't um, the thing. It was just more or less like my mom because she's very, very conservative. Those around me are very, very conservative. So it was just kind of like one of those things. But they were like, as long as you're happy doing what you're doing, like, you know, and I was like, dang, like, I just, I struggle with that because I grew up, like I said, a very conservative home, went to like church, and then I was going to a Catholic school. And it was actually, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I was just all around. Catholic was, school girl. Right? That's but it was it. actually, it was actually one of my teachers who was a nun. Like, she was the one who used to talk to us about like sex and, you know, and like she would um, show us about like journaling and we would have this time to meditate during her class. And it just like really opened up something for like me and all of us. So it was like, you know, but she wasn't having sex, right? But she would help like students and stuff that were, if there was questions and things like she was very, very open. So like, I thank her for just being open, you know, because again, you don't have that in school. You don't have teachers like talking about stuff. Courtney, have you ever heard of orgasmic meditation? No. Yeah, me neither. Until I was reading somebody's resume. So, you know, I had to ask because I want to learn. I'm all into meditation, but <laughs> orgasmic meditation, like that might take some shit to another level. <laughs> Pinch your boo, please. What's that all about? Well, orgasmic meditation is a uh, 15-minute partnered practice where you have a stroker. The stroker can be male or female, and they're stroking the clit for 15 minutes. So there's nothing else that you that that's involved is just a 15 minutes, you know, safe container where the, the Volvo owner is receiving and the person who is stroking is stroking the cliff for 15 minutes. And the only goal in mind is just to feel. So question, am I meditating about something? Am I, am I meditating manifesting or if I'm meditating, just relaxing? Well, see, cause I know, and that's just what they, they call it. Like this was something that was, um, that was invented by Nicole De Dome. So she has a book on it or whatever. So she called it like orgasm meditation. So it's really not like any type of like getting into your body is like a form of meditation and spirituality and like all of that stuff. So that's kind of where it's coming from. So you're not sitting there going like, um, you know, or any of that right. stuff or what have you, right? You're just literally like dropping into your body. And what it, what it does for those with vulva owners is that it actually helps you just drop into your body. It helps you get out of your mind. It helps you release a lot of the shame that you have about your body so like you begin to like you know because there's a lot of women that are like I don't want somebody touching me or especially a complete stranger like oh my god like you mean somebody's just gonna stroke my clit for 15 minutes and that's like you know right but you, of course you can do this with your partner in your marriage like all of those different things once you learn the practice and technique on the flip side of that like I'm a big proponent of self-pleasure and so I tell people to masturbate you know uh meditate before you masturbate I tell people to do that. So it's important, again, to just be able to drop into your body, get into a a space, create that space around you before you're getting ready to like self-pleasure and do whatever meditation feels good for you so that when it's time to self-pleasure, like you're already like in that state of just like arousal, feeling good, connectedness with yourself before you're dropping into self-pleasure. 
So like Courtney's married, right? Okay. So while he's over there stroking, does he meditate too? He is. So it's a container. So it's the way that they sit. Again, clothes are on. He would have his clothes on, you know, and the, the person who is receiving, she would have like her bottoms off. And it's a container. So there's, there's pillows and there's their support and all of that stuff. And her legs are butterfly open. And all you're doing is stroking the clit. And what you do is especially like the left quadrant of the clit. So what you're doing is you're just stroking. So whatever she's feeling in her body, especially when you're, you really learn how to stroke and connect, he's going to feel it in his finger. Then it's going to go through his body and he's going to start feeling all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So both parties are receiving and experiencing that, but it's not about like, oh, I'm just doing this to kind of get her off. And like, I'm just, no, it really isn't about that. It really is about connection and like being able to, to feel. So gentlemen, take note. Did you see she's stroking? There was no vigorous. No, no, we ain't playing DJ, right? No, no, this is just, you know, you're stroking, right? And again, you're hearing, you're hearing the sounds and the things like that, that are coming from, you know, the person who is like receiving. So, you know, you know, when that, that spot, like the stroke or what have you. And I, you know, I've been, I've been um, practicing orgasm meditation for shoot, like, let's see, maybe about like eight years now or what have you. And like, it was, it was interesting because especially when I even started, the energy is so strong. Like after that 15 minute window happens, like you're coming down. So there is no going over or anything like that is a very, very tight container. So when you're coming down on that stroke, my org, I might be in such an orgasmic state that is hard for me to come down. And what happened was my partner used to like, it was hard for him to like, you know, help me come down and I would get headaches afterwards because there was so much energy that was circulating during that time. So he had to learn to just help me, you know, come down and ground me before that 15 minutes because I would be in that state. Wow. Courtney, you okay over there? <laughs> I'm good. I got a question though. Um, yes. I used to, on this other show I used to do, um, we used to play this game, and I uh, one of the questions we asked was, um, and you tell me what you think, both of y'all. Men want sex. Women need sex. And uh, we explained it further. It was like the, the, the um, I think the chase for men sometimes is more exciting than actual, you know, because it's like after, you know, uh, the Little Wayne song. Uh, soon as I come, I come to my senses and it's like, it's over with, but the chase of, and cause you know, we're collectors and hunters by natural. So by nature, so we to say, yeah, I got her, I had her, I had her. So we can put all this and when we get together, we talk about everything, but it's really not about like the in-depth sex, sexual experience, like how you, what you explained it about for women. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I talk to women, I hear about, you know, this big full on sexual experience. And, and when I talk to guys, it's just like, yo, yeah, I, I smashed her. And, and, you know what I'm saying? So what do you think? Do you think it is that women need sex versus men want sex? Well, Sherry, do you want to answer or you want me to go? I'm going to say women need good sex. Okay. Real sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that uh, we want and need it. We want and need it. And I also think depending on the man that you're talking to, their story, their, their information is going to be different because there are men out there as well, too, that are experiencing that there's it's all it's all good to have like a quickie, you know, whatever. And that's fine. That's all fun and all right. But there are men that also desire that as well, that a desire like that love making that foreplay and the extensive orgasms and like all of that stuff, too. So, you know, we're not going to shortchange the men because it's not just like, it's you crazy. know, women. I've right? never met those men. Oh, you, let me introduce you to some of them. Yeah. Well, so, I don't I'm just saying, right. I'm just saying like, they're, cause they're there. And it's, it's, it's because again, that they've tapped into what's possible for their bodies. See, it's so, always a conversation I get is always, yo, yo, I smashed her. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, fellas, but I'm telling it all. Yo, I hit, the, yo, I hit her. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was it like? Yo, man, that she did this. She did that. Yo, I had her doing this. Boom. And it was like, I right, yeah, now I'm finna now I'm finna smash a homie. You know what I'm saying? So it's always been, it's never been like the oh, she made me, you know, it was like, like, you know what I'm saying? There was one of them like, yeah, I, I I got her to do this. It was never, it was like a competition thing. It was never like a a sexual experience, like the way mm -hmm. I hear women talk. I never, because, I never hear that from men. Because most men 
don't know how to identify the clitoris. They don't know where it is. So if you can't find the clitoris and it's right there looking at you like, hello, you don't know where a G-spot is. So you're up in there just doing a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> For real. For real. For real. And it's, again, it's lack of education. So they only know what they know. And also, I, I, I would look at the women that they're with as well, too, because if the women are accepting this, they're teaching them that that's okay. Right. And so, again, our bodies are capable of so much. Men are attached to their ejaculatory orgasms. You know, once I come, I'm good. Like, right. But the reality is for men that are under 35, 35 and under, it takes three days for you to recover from one ejaculation. If you're over 35, it takes you up to eight days to, reca um, to uh, recover from one ejaculation. So if you're ejaculating two and three times a day, depending on where your age is, you're looking at three to eight days to recover from each of those and you're doing it every single day, you wonder why there's a depletion. You wonder why they're not able to continue to maintain. You wonder why they're not able to maintain their erection. You wonder why men in their 20s are experiencing erectile dysfunction. It's not an age. It's not like, oh, when they get to 60 and 70, oh, you know, that's when it's going to be, I'm going to start popping these pills. No, I have clients that are in their 20s yeah. that are experiencing this. And I heard that a comedian say something like, um, y'all keep using them pills in your 20s. You're going to need them in your 30s, <laughs> you know, for real. Yeah, yeah. 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 That takes me to two questions that were asked. One okay. was, how many times should men either ejaculate or masturbate per week? Okay. So again, I'm a firm believer in self-pleasure as well as orgasms for both men and women. So men, um, if they are, see men, again, they only know to ejaculate. That's their orgasm, right? But if they can learn how to have an orgasm without ejaculating, they can have multiple orgasms every single day if they want to. So I teach my clients to, or, to ejaculate maybe once a month. Wait, wait. So you said uh -huh. you know, once you said a month. Have, you said have an <laughs> orgasm without ejaculating. Yes. For, for a man? For a man. Man, I'm, I'm 42 and I ain't never heard about this stuff. Yeah. So again, that's what porn teaches you, right? They see you see it on the porn and everything. And you're like, oh, you know, we get it in and you ejaculate and like, woo. But what yeah. happens? You're tired, right? Afterwards, you're ready to go to sleep. You're ready to get some to eat. You're ready to smoke. You release this, this, this hormone. In that order. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so you're releasing prolactin and that prolactin is that's going to make you sleepy. Right. So imagine being able to experience orgasms multiple orgasms, full body orgasms, and keep going and keep going and keep going. It's not about you. I'm tired. I can't keep going. It's just imagining that. So men, they, like, again, they know about the ejaculatory orgasm. That's what the world knows about, but your body is capable of so many other types of orgasms. They just haven't tapped into it. Okay. So while we're on this whole um, erectile dysfunction thing, do you believe in the black mecca root, the demia and the beet root and herbs? And is it important for men to drink water? That was a question. Yes. So the um, maca root what was the other one. The um, uh, it's beet root. Beet root. Uh huh. Is it demia? Domania, I can't, I, I can't like that. whatever. I know I can't, I see it, but I can't. Yeah. So basically all of those herbs are about circulation, helping blood circulation and flow. So even the dom, dom, dom spell it for me. D-A-M-A. -A -A. I, I wrote it down in my notes. So it might, it's okay. I think it's D-A-M-A-N-I-A. -A -A. So even women take that. So again, it's about circulation is even helping for reproductive and all of that stuff in your wound care. So um, yes, those are good herbs, natural herbs to take again, because it's helping the blood flow beets, drinking bleed, beet juice and all this stuff is helping the blood flow. That's what we want. We want blood flow to that area. We don't want stagnation. And what about oh. drinking water? Of course, because we need it to flow. We need things to flow through our bodies, right? We need things, to, we need to flush things out. So if you're someone who smokes, if you're someone who drinks a lot, if you're so, you know, whatever, right? There's going to be some stagnation going on. You need to be able to replenish your body with the water, with some of the different herbs or juices or whatever you choose to do and flush that out of your system and out of your body. So when I was younger, it was just uh, Hennessy and Remy Martin. Okay. <laughs> they still doing that. So <laughs> So I'm saying, so we ain't, ain't no beats and stuff in, in Hennessy and Remy Martin. Right. Because again, 
We don't, we only know what we know. You grew up going based on what people in the barbershop told you and your boys told you, right? And that's just what it is. You only know what you know. And unfortunately, like I said, within our community, we don't talk about this. We don't talk about this stuff. And that's why there's a lack of education. I don't, I don't have a penis, but when you drink Hennessy and stuff like that, is it like a numbing effect to make you last longer or is it to actual like you're supposed to get long and strong. Well, well it don't do nothing for me now, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, put, but put me to sleep. <laughs> As I say, but after a while, it but basically when I was, alcohol actually affects the penis in a different yeah. way. It makes yeah. it not be able to get out. Yeah, That's happen. why you've heard of whiskey dick, right? Like you've heard people say, like, oh, they got whiskey dick, right? Because they're drinking or just whatever, and then they can't perform. For some men, they drink. I've still, I've heard some young men still say that they'll drink something, they'll get a Red Bull, or they'll drink some orange juice, and all of these things, right, to just like be able to, to, to last longer because that's what they want. They want to be able to last longer. They want to please their partner. They want to be able to last longer. Now, I have brothers, right? Okay. So I get privy of these conversations, but can't they just last longer by going in the bathroom and spitting one out before they actually get to her? For some, yes. For some, yes. But again, there, the erection, there's so many different things that affect that. So whether it is the dietary thing, right? It could be some health issues. You could have high blood pressure. You know what I'm saying? You could have like other things going on. It could be mental. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be mental. You know, I have like a client that may, um, that, you know, they, they watch a lot of porn, right? And they're constantly like, you know, masturbating. However, then when they finally get with a girl, they don't know how to take what they see on TV. They're like, how do I do this? Because I'm not used to being with a real person, right? Who comes with all this other stuff, right. yet alone a woman who is empowered and knows her body and knows what she wants. You know, it could be intimidating. So now they're in their head like, oh shit, I cannot even perform. Like what the, um, you know, and then you're wondering why they can't perform. So it can be anxiety. It can be emotional. It could be like a number of different things of why they're not able to last longer. Wow. But our medical field, just like, oh, when you go to the doctor, hey, doc, you know what? I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm losing my erection. I can't. Okay, here's the pill. Quick fix, right? Quick fixes backfire. Quick fixes are never the way. Mm -hmm. They definitely backfire. I know a few people who have actually had strokes. Because mm. of pill. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, again, I, I don't recommend that for anyone, again, because it affects your heart. You know, it has everything pumping and everything. So there's other things and techniques and things that you can do without having to take a pill. Wow. Uh, let me jump into another question. Really yes, quickly. And of course. We're going to giggle about this question because I have been teasing with maybe starting a feet page. I do oh. not have a foot fetish, but for some reason, men with foot fetishes seek me. So somebody told me I was standing on a gold line and you know, Courtney is, is willing to help me. Yes. And that uh, Sean is all for it. All for it. I know. <laughs> Go Sean. Sean is all for it. And my man's like, I'll be your feet manager. So right, right. We're, we're, we're talking about working this out. But the question was, he said, I have a foot fetish and a voyeur fetish. Ooh. My partner is not with it. I do love her, but I wish she would participate the fact that I have fetishes, will that mess up my relationship? Mm, no, it doesn't necessarily mess up your relationship. Like, I don't believe that people are like, you know, like mismatched when it comes to their sexuality. It's just really understanding and learning their blueprint, learning how they're wired. So that's a kink, right? Like that's a fetish, like that's a kink for him. And so his foot fetish, and I, I agree, I think that you should do it because if people are asking you for it, like get, girl, make that money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because there's money to be made, I'm telling you, right? So, it, you know, he has this fetish where he he wants to possibly see her feet, whether it's in heels, whether it's in stocking, whether it's bare, whatever that is for him. And then he said he's a voyeur, so he enjoys looking and watching. That is his kink. There's right. nothing wrong with that. He may just be with someone who, if she's not open to that, then he has to look at that piece of it. But there's nothing wrong with that. We need to honor what we want in our desires. And I love that you said the blueprint because you are, and I don't want to say it wrong, but you are a blue erotic blueprint counselor. Or I'm, a, I'm a licensed erotic blueprint coach. Yes. What exactly is that? 
So the blueprints are basically, there are five different blueprints that we, you know, that we have, and everyone has a primary and a secondary. So a lot of people equate it to like the love languages, right? Like we have our love language and everything. So they kind of equate it to that. We have a primary and then we have a secondary. So my primary is energetics and then secondary is sensual, which means that that's the easiest pathway for me into my eroticism. So because there's five blueprints, you have energetic, you have sensual, you have sexual, you have kinky, and then you have what we call as a shapeshifter, which is all of them. And so once you identify, each of you identifies your blueprint, you know, then you get to say like, oh, well, this is why I like this, or I, I do this, or I, I crave this, or I desire this. And this is why he does, or she does, or, you know, what have you, right? Now I get to say, well, let me see if I want to play and, you know, and, and play in this area over here, because this may be taboo for me, right? Like, so talking about the foot fetish, that could be like a taboo for her, like, no, like your feet are gross. Like some people are like, oh, feet are gross. We don't touch that. We don't, you know, whatever. But for him, it's a turn on. And so if she tapped into that, she would probably experience some different type of sex with him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Courtney, how do you feel about feet? <laughs> Look at her face. Uh, more of a leg than feet. <laughs> like legs more than feet. I mean, it's really cool, but I mean, it's not a deal breaker. I mean, I don't know. i never seen no bad ones, so... <laughs> No, there is there is money to be made. You you'd be surprised, especially when it comes to people's kinks and fetish. You there's some money to be made, girl. Go on and do that. Do that. Oh my gosh, I feel like people will buy people will buy your shoes, your used shoes, just because you wore them all day. Are you kidding me? Now I'm I not kidding. Sean you. told me I should sell a couple pair of underwear a year, you, girl. And, and Char, Char was on the show and Courtney, Char and I have had some conversations about the underwear just doesn't, I'm like, then they hold a piece of your DNA. That's a little weird. I'm thinking about it though. Maybe three a year. I don't know. Girl, again, they, if, they, if they are asking you for that, they're, yeah. that's telling you there's a market for that. They want that. They want that. Look at Courtney's face over there. Courtney's like, this is too much. For me. Okay. So uh -huh. <laughs> I have another question really quick. It's just Courtney. certain things that I'll just never experience. Like no right. one's never gonna say, Hey, I want some I want your draws. I'll pay money for your draws. <laughs> I wanna see your feet. Like that's just certain things that you know it's, it's crazy. <laughs> like, now you finna sell some underwear. That's crazy. Go, Don't me go, go for it. Don't you want your 10 percent Courtney? <laughs> sure, I'll take it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> You would have never thought this was gonna do that, huh? You like, I did not know this was gonna be part of the plan. Yeah, no, I, thought okay, was, so I just thought we were producing a podcast. Right, right. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna be selling draws. <laughs> now we Victoria's Secret. I am <laughs> going to ask a couple more, and then I want to get personal because I have some. I have some questions of my okay. own. Okay. So somebody said I'm affectionate, and my wife isn't, and sometimes I want to be nasty. She doesn't respond the way I'd like her to. Um, and I want to know how not to take it personal or feel rejected. I know that she didn't grow up with a lot of affection, but I mm. crave affection and I'm super affectionate. And this is, there's a man talking about his wife. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we, it's, it's natural. We all crave touch. It's just, that's how we thrive, right? We all crave touch. And some can consider can be more affectionate than like others, but this goes back to again the blueprints, like understanding what what your partner like needs, right? Mm -hmm. And so if he is craving this touch, maybe he's sensual, right? He's craving touch and he needs to be stroked and he needs like certain things for him to just be like, you know, and she doesn't understand that. She's just thinking, like, oh my God, he's getting on my nerves. Like, I'm just tired of him touching me, you know, kind of thing or whatever, right? You know, and she doesn't understand it. So again, Again, it's just about an education, understanding why he is, you know, desiring that. And also too, maybe where she's coming from, why for her is not so easy to, to be so affectionate and then working through that together. Said that Because I, I had somebody ask a question and it was a man. He said that him and his wife had talked about her life before they were together, where he's never had a threesome, but she had threesomes with men and men. She had threesomes with men and women. And now she's married to him and she doesn't want to open up those Pandora boxes because she said that 
in the past relationships where she did that, they were not successful. Mm. And she's afraid that once she opens up Pandora box, that she may lose him in some sort of way. And he's like, I swear to God, I ain't going nowhere. You give me that. I ain't going nowhere. Why is it that the mates before me got all this treatment that he's feeling is special, but he feels like she's neglecting him in a way? Mm -hmm. Why did he get, you know, why did she get her freak out before she got to him? How, How do you handle that? That's what I'm saying. Again, it's about communication. Like I'm all for talking about like all of that from the very beginning. And a lot of people don't, they get into relationships and they kind of touch on certain things Mm -hmm. and then they just, they just start to, you know, get together and then they just create whatever this life is, but they really don't talk about be radically honest about what you want, what you desire. And also there could be like, people don't even know what they want and desire. They may determine that or figure that out later on, like in life. Right. But it still goes back to communicating with your partner. Because we all grow in stages and we change. So if you can communicate that and say like, you know what, like, you know, I, I, I used to do this like over here and this is what it did, did for me. Right. Like, and so I want to share this with you because and what people are afraid is they're afraid of the judgment. Yeah. They don't want to be judged by their partner. Right. They don't want to be criticized. Like he was, he saying like, oh, I wish she would, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. She probably don't even know that. She's thinking like, if I tell him anymore or even go, go into that pathway with him, then is it going to end like the relationship that ended before and see open relationships and like all of that stuff, the way that it works is because there's honesty and open communication. You have to have that if you're going to be diving into other areas. Okay. Question. You said open Mm -hmm. relationships, right? Somebody Mm -hmm. else asked about that before we touch on that is having a threesome considered an open relationship. It depends. Are you married or in a relationship with someone and then you choose to have a threesome with your partner? You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's considered an open relationship. It just means that this is something that we do time to time. And this is our, you know, our kink and we get off on it. And that's what it is. We do it for birthdays. Okay. That's just what it is. Doesn't mean it's like, right. Doesn't (laughs) Doesn't mean it's like an open relationship. It's just because, but we both know that we're doing this. We're both on the same page. We're in agreement with whatever the rules are. And we have this fun together. The rules, there's rules that there's rules. You have to, you have to identify the rules that work for you. That's where things go, you know, haywire and you have issues with people because there's not communication. You know, there's not this trust. If we set rules and then someone steps outside of that, then what that's going to do, I'm not going to trust you to do this anymore. Right. So you always, even if there's rules and you're like, okay, you know, I don't like this rule anymore. Then we need to renegotiate. We need to talk about this again. Let's establish some new rules of where we are today. I like that. I'm all for renegotiating. Yeah. Renegotiate, constantly renegotiate. So it's an open relationship. I'm sorry, Courtney, but somebody on Instagram came and they wrote about how them and their partner, I couldn't figure out whether it was a woman or a man that was writing me. And okay. I, was, I didn't want to ask, but they said that their woman, so I don't know if it was a lesbian or I don't know if it was a man, but they said okay. that their woman has more of a sexual appetite than they do. Okay. Um, And she's more sexually advanced. Okay. So they're in an open relationship. And I was like, I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're into. Uh But they said that it's not open for them. It's only open for their woman. Mm. So you have you have different dynamics when it comes to that where and again, it could just be a kink. It's like, well, I don't have that desire to be with other people, but you do. And I want to support you in that. And I love to hear about it or I even love to watch it, but I don't want to play with someone else. That's just what they they're into. And that's okay because that works for them. So really there's like no rules. It's like whatever. There's no rule is whatever you choose to make. There's nothing wrong with if that person chooses not to experience things with other people, but really wants their partner to go out there and, you know, it could be their turn on a come back and tell me, tell me what the, tell me what you did. Tell me how they used you. Tell me how, whatever. Right. Like that could be their turn on. Look at Courtney's face. I know you saw when I said that. He was like, <laughs> I asked my wife, how did they use you? <laughs> that's what I heard come out of his mouth when I keep saying it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, how, like, like a lot of times guys, our ego get mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. So, so like when you're talking about the, the girl that used to do all this other stuff, I know guys that'll be like, well, no, nah, I can't marry her because right. I ain't playing Captain Sable. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, 
but but then they might be missing out on some good stuff that right. they might really enjoy all uh, because of their ego. So what 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 do you say to those guys? Be, the, that's the that's the internal work that the men have to do because it is ego. It is ego. What is wrong? It's nothing wrong when you hear men talking about yeah, I, like you said earlier, I smashed her. I did this. I went to this one. I went to this friend, right? And that's acceptable. But a woman that says that. A woman that goes out there and does that, then it's like, oh, wow, she's a hoe. She's a slut. She can't, I can't marry her. Why not? Why not? She's honoring her desires. She's standing in her power. She's owning what it is that she wants. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Mm -hmm. And and I mean, let's just be real. Once you pass 30, you dating somebody's hoe anyway. (laughs) Hey, hey. I proudly wear that title. I am that. And then some. So what? You know what I'm saying? Oh, well. <laughs> I'm with you all day. Oh, well. So while we're talking about, oh, well, right. let's Courtney really scream. Let's talk about some female ejaculation. Okay. I didn't realize until I was in my 30s that okay. I could squirt. Uh-huh. Okay. And when I found out, I was like, what was that is exactly what came out of my mouth, right? And he was like, oh my God. And he jumped back. I was like, what are you doing? Do, 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 do it again. Like, don't stop. It was the most amazing thing yeah. that has ever happened. And now, like, I would never be with anybody who couldn't make me do that again. A lot of women, so, you know, because I share, I'm like, hey, can you do this? <laughs> you need to learn how to do this. Right. They have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we get our sisters to squirt? Because everybody needs to know this feeling. Yes. So as long as there isn't any medical things going on with with her, um, certain surgeries and things like that, a woman can squirt. It's what possible. kind of surgery? Like what? Like let me know. I mean, so it could just. I mean, again, it could be anything. So like you know, some because of sometimes like if they have women have like a hysterectomy, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that she can't squirt, but there could be numbness or scar tissue within her, you know, in her vulva, in her vagina. So because of that, you know, there could be pain that she experiences, right? There could be hormonal changes that she's going through. So she's going and she's dealing with all of these different things, and which means that her body's not going to relax. So squirting is like one of the number one things that I get a lot of people like, okay, you know, teach me how to squirt or let me show me how to teach my girl how to squirt or whatever. Right. And so again, it's not as, it's not this like, oh my God, is it, why is it so hard? It really is understanding your body, understanding your anatomy. Like you're talking about where things are, right. Yeah. And that beautiful G spot that's in there, like at the roof, you know, when you, when you lick the, um, you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. You know that feeling? You mm-hmm. feel that? That's what the G-spot feels like. Hmm. Okay? That's what the G-spot feels like. And it's about two inches inside, right? And so, again, you have to have, so you can do all the techniques and all this stuff, but if a woman is like not in, if she's all in her head yes, and she's not fully surrendered and relaxed, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. It's just not going to happen, right? So it's, 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 it's a team sport, right? So, but you can also do, you can learn how to do, I mean, ejaculate yourself. And that's what I was sharing I with you. I need to learn how to do it. Yes. I, I teach women how to do this themselves so that they can then turn around and share this with their partners. I know if, how to tell somebody else to do it, but I yeah. don't know how to do it myself. Yeah. So it's let me. The, it's the it's what I call, and I don't know. The come I'm, hither. What I'm calling the milking of it. The come, the come hither, you know, yeah. like, thing, right, right. So again, if she's not, if you're not relaxed, if you're all in your head, that's just not going to happen. Another common reason that holds people back is because they think it's pee. They think like, oh my God, like I'm getting ready to pee on you. Right. And yeah. the reality is that it's not. So if you, and I tell, I tell people say, do this. Cause usually people use the bathroom after sex, use the bathroom before sex. That way, you know, that you've used the bathroom. There's no pee. And now I can actually relax into this experience. So the sensation that you're feeling, right, it feels like you have to pee. And most women will stop themselves because they're like, oh, my God, this is so it's like, let me stop. No, no. What is this? Right. And they'll stop themselves. Right. And so then because, again, it's that pressure, like I have to perform, I have to do this because he's really working hard or, you know, she's really working hard and she's trying to make me squirt. And it's like, take all of that off of the table. You have to be fully relaxed. But that sensation that you're feeling is the feeling. Keep working through that. Keep it's going through so that. so funny that you said that because the first time it happened to me, I got up and was confused because I had fucked up his couch. 
I had fucked up his chair. I fucked him up. Courtney, I just might have to cut up the fucks, but that's the only way to describe it. And then I went to the bathroom and I fully pissed. And I right? was like, right. And then I thought back and I had to call somebody. I had to call somebody who, who has been in my life for years. And I was like, remember, I used to always tell you I had a pain. Do you know? And he said, yeah, I knew. I said, why did you never tell me? Why did you let me get up? And he said, I just, I don't know. I just figured, I said, no, you were supposed to be like my sensei. But they he didn't know. Like, again, he didn't know, right? Well, he said he did. He's like, he oh. didn't know, but he, I was young and dumb. And I guess, I don't know. He didn't want to ruin my life. I was like, you should have ruined it. <laughs> but see, yeah, like when you go to the restroom, right? You go to the restroom, you use the bathroom. Yeah. You can't go right back unless you unless you're pregnant or you got something sitting on your bladder or something like that. But, you know, you can't just go back and keep using the bathroom back to back. Right. So, again, you know, once you've used the bathroom, anything that you feel, that's not me going to the bathroom. Yeah. Just relax into that experience and that pleasure. Look at Courtney. Are we making you uncomfortable, Courtney? No, I just I can't ask the questions I want to ask right now. Oh, OK. <laughs> you want to okay. type it into the chat? You want to type it into the chat? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. I, I, I'll get it in in a second. Okay. Okay. So a question. I see that you um, do vaginal steaming, right? Mm -hmm. I've never had my VJJ steamed. Is that, I mean, I've, I've been in a hot shower. I've been in the sauna. Do I need to get my VJJ steamed? It's 46 years old. Like, what do I need to do? Do I need to go? Or I have a face steamer. Am I supposed to like sit on it with a towel? Like what, what is this? Again, it's something else I teach women to like do for themselves as well as men. So men don't even realize that they can also do that. So, so depending, yes, they can do in their, 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 their lingam. Cause that's what it is. That's a sacred, that's lingam is, is a sacred word for penis. Oh, and our yoni goodness. is a sacred word for our, you know, vulva. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what you do is like when you're steaming or whatever, there's various different herbs, depending on what's going on within your body. So, you know, I may work, make up some kind of whatever concoction for the person that I'm steaming or what have you, but it's a time for you just to really connect back to your yoni, back to your lingam. And we don't do that. That's where all of our power is. That's where all of our power is. So we get a chance to sit. And this is something that's been going on for centuries in every culture. We just don't talk about it. You know, a lot of midwives and stuff, they did this. Like you just, we just don't talk about it. So this is nothing new. Well, what do I do? Do I buy a bowl? Do I buy a steamer? Like, is this something that I should do on a regular? Yeah, I, I encourage women to do on a regular. And again, without knowing your history, I can't say like how often you should do it or whatever, because again, I give a protocol based on what's going on with the person. But like, yeah, you it's basically herbs that you're using. You know, you can use one herb, you can use, um, you know, no herbs. I, you know, there's some women that you can even just steam with water. You can steam with um, um, apple cider vinegar, you know, and just put some in a, in a, in a, in a, in a water and steam because all it's doing is just imagine what does steam do for your face when you go get a facial? It opens up my pores. Right. So what do you think it's doing down there? That's why it helps to release a lot of stuff. It helps to release trauma. It helps to release like fibroids. It helps to release cysts. It creates circulation. Again, the steam is going to open up the pores and create circulation. You know, some people do it before they're having sex. You know, some people keep it, it as part of their ritual, whatever you choose to do, but it's all about creating that circulation and flow within your body. You know, so women that experience dryness, there's certain herbs for that, you know, whether they're either menopausal or not menopausal, they're just experienced dryness, you know, steaming helps with all of that. So there's so many benefits to doing so. Wow. Somebody asked me about menopausal sex. Yeah. And yeah. she didn't go into depth, but she said, ask about menopausal sex. Yeah. I'm not quite there yet. I'm pre-menopausal. Uh -huh. Well, what, what, what's, what's going to happen to me? I it, again, it just depends. It really depends because everyone is different. So like you can be in, uh, menopausal or even in your 20s. It doesn't just mean like, oh, your 40s and 50s or whatever. Then that's what happened, depending on what's going on with you. If a woman has had to have a hysterectomy, they, it can send her into right menopause early. So again, depending on what's going on with their hormones, even herbal steaming helps with that because there's certain herbs that you can use to help with the hot flashes, to help with the circulation, to help with the dryness, the, to help with the thinness, because that's some of the things that women experience. They experience thinness in their, you know, in their, in the, in the canal for their body. So if they're having sex with a partner, they're experiencing this friction and it's painful. 
So it may not be that they really don't want to have sex. It's just that maybe there's dryness, there's thinness there, and it's painful for them. So if it's painful, I'm not jumping at having sex with you. Right. Right. Wow. Like but getting- again, if we don't know that, mm-hmm. we go to the doctor, here's some cream, take this. Or what's very popular is they give numbing cream. I would You're never to recommend, feel numb- I would never recommend numbing cream on anything ever. Because again, I'm all about pleasure. I'm all about feeling. I want you to feel everything. Yeah. I want you to feel it all. Look at Courtney's face. Did they go, Courtney? You ready to ask your question? <laughs> no, nah, go ahead. I'm still listening. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about vaginal thing. You you hear that? You got something called lingam. Is that what it is? A lingam. lingam. Uh huh. You need the, to you need to theme your lingam. The lingam. You know, again, even like even with stroking, like so when they're doing their their self pleasure practice, like their strokes and stuff, you have to like learn to like love on that, like love on your yoni, love on your lingam, and then you teach your partner how to do that as well. You know, it's a sacred, it's a sacred practice. It really is. Okay, it's so about just like rubbing the clit and being like, okay, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's not. It's not. When you I'm just trying come- to imagine myself. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. James. No, 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 no. It's okay. You just try to go ahead. Now I'm just trying to imagine myself trying to have this conversation with the boys. They're gonna be right. like, "Man, get the." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, like, I, and I understand what you're saying because guys, it's like you took giving information that a lot of men don't know or probably don't even care about. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think, like, hey, you know, if I tell, like, hey, I'm trying to, how would, like, how would, like, let's just say I wanted, to, I'm, I'm not gonna do this. This is not gonna end right. <laughs> but if I wanted to do this. How 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 would how should I bring this up to the fellows? Like, hey man, you know, there's some things we don't know about. Like, yeah, right, right. You know what I found? It's interesting because those that are always talking and bragging about what they did or whatever are usually the ones that are not doing what they said they did and all. Well, that they stuff. got pictures and videos. I mean, they can have a picture and video of something. That doesn't mean that it was good. Is she squirting? Well, if it's good for them though. <laughs> but it was good for them because they came really quickly. Okay, let me give you the statistic. Right. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. It takes it takes 20 to 45 minutes for a woman's internal erectile tissue to be fully engorged. I have no idea what you just said. Okay. So we're talking about, we're going to pull her out, right? We're going to talk about, right? So let me show you this. This is the clitoris. This is what it looks like. Not just this little piece right here, right? This is the clitoris. So we have the, the clitoral legs and we have the bulbs, right? So all of this is hidden underneath, underneath, right? Underneath the labia and all of that stuff. And so if it takes us 20 to 45 minutes for our internal erectile tissue to be fully engorged and typically sex lasts two to five minutes, what happens? The woman's not completely satisfied. Exactly, right? She's not, she's not being pleased. She's not being satisfied. And I'm a firm believer that men, they they want to please their partners. They want that. Yeah, their partners. But, yes. Huh? Yes, their partners. They their, their partners, they, yes. They do, right? You know, and so, but not usually, the randoms though. Not the random. Not the random. You know, maybe not the random, but they want to, they want to please their partner, right? right? So if you're having, if if you're having sex and it's lasting two to two to seven minutes or whatever, right? You know, your your the quality of sex, if you start to learn this and understand how she's wired, your quality of your sexual experience is going to be so much like different when she's completely engorged. So 90% of women have never experienced full engorgement. 90% of women. That is equal to a man never experiencing full erection in his entire life. That's horrible. So, okay, a lot of men, since they can't find the clitoris in the first place, they don't even understand that the clitoris actually gets erect. Yes, yes. That's why I showed you this. Exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And every woman is going to be, everyone is going to be different. Every vulva owner is going to be different. Right. So hers may be hidden or whatever. And then all of a sudden it comes out or whatever. So it, it definitely does. It gets larger. It gets fuller. It gets more engorged. Right. So when you're talking to your boys and you're like, you know what, like there's some stuff that we don't know. Again, you're going to have some that are in man. I ain't got to do all that because they lazy. They don't want to learn nothing new. Right. Yeah. They don't want to learn nothing new. They're good with what they got because they're being taken care of. 
Oh man, I can come in a couple minutes. I'm good. Right. But they don't know that she over there telling her girl, girl, I wish this, I wish he would, you know, I'm so over him just getting on top of me and just, you know what I'm saying? Like they don't know what the women are having the conversation, right? Yeah. They're not being satisfied. Yeah. And there are women that are also stepping out in, of their relationships as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so if the goal is to please your partner, both of you, your goal is to please your partner, then I am willing to do whatever it takes to do so. If that means I have to learn something new, that means I have to learn something new. So that's what that's what I need to do. I need to start talking to people who actually have partners in the room instead well, of people to have. Well, not even just even singles, though. Right. Because then that helps them for the next person that they're with. Oh, okay. Right. I I have a question and Courtney, I need you to answer this too, because you're the only man here, right? It seems to me that a lot of people have sexual addictions that are not identified. Mm. A lot of black men who grew up in urban neighborhoods who maybe were not um, active in like sports or extracurricular activities, their extracurricular activity became bitches, right? Mm -hmm. And so their sport became sex. Mm -hmm. Then they get involved with a woman or a mate that they actually love and they don't know how to perform or to stop playing the sport that they're used to playing. Mm -hmm. So they want to be good men, but they're addicted to the sport, not even realizing that bitches is becoming a sport <laughs> and they're addicted to the game per se. Mm -hmm. What kind of counseling or identification do men, because I know a lot of really good men. And I hate to say, but a lot of really good men are just not really good spouses because they're addicted to the sport that they don't even realize is a, is a yeah. mental thing. What can they do to break that cycle or to stop? Like, you know, a lot of them want, don't want to play the sport no more. But, but like it happens at a young age that where your first, your first homie, he gets some. And he comes back and he starts lying about everything. And then, and from that point on, everybody's trying to chase that one thing that your homie said he got or did. And everybody, then it's just a cycle. Everybody's constantly competing against each other. Cause we still, we still hold our guy right now who's been happily married, separated, back married again as the man for, for, for getting some at 13. And, and we still hold him as the man for that right now. Because <laughs> if they put value on that, that's what is valuable for them, right? That's what you guys value. He, he got some at 13. Like, oh man, he's the man, right? He got something at 13. Yeah. And she was, and she was, and I think she was like 19 or 20. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. You but what, what they don't realize is, is I, I knew it when you said that. I knew it. She was a predator and she sexually molested a little boy. And a lot of young men don't identify mm. that they were sexually assaulted or sexually molested at a very early age. And it brings on this sexual deviancy or I don't, I don't know, like an emotion that they don't know how to deal with. But mm -hmm. so many of our young black men were taken advantage of and not yeah. just by other men, but by older women. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't realize they were molested. Yeah. It's a whole fucking sport. And unfortunately, you know, not that white men don't do it. I don't really know what they do in their community, they but do. our community, sure they do it. But I think white people have a disconnect about sex that we don't have hmm. um, a, a lot of for the, for the women and the men. And I, some of us are getting to that where it's not um, mental. It's just physical. Mm -hmm. They can mm -hmm. turn the two off mm -hmm. for us. We let it ruin our whole lives. But I'm just, I just I do want to say that I'm very intrigued by what I've been learning today um, and hearing, because, like I said, the, the conversations that I've had with, about sex with, with, with the crew is totally different. It's, it's more like I said, it's always about competition. And let me come food. sit on the block so I can say show me right. what it is, homie. Do you know? Go. <laughs> That's why lesbians is taking your girls because you can't identify it. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go, you go ahead, go ahead. I, now, I was going to say, because she talked about the sport, right? And it's all about what they can accomplish, what they can get. Like men are competitive, right? So how many did you get? Did you get this? Did you get that? It's not about quality. Yeah, it's not. It's not about quality. At all. At it's all. sacredness, right? 
Mm-hmm. And that's why, again, they're talking all of this stuff, but really with the person that they choose to be with or that they're married with or whatever, if you ask them, they'll tell you, like, this shit is probably whack. I'm just saying, because yeah. it's not, it's not, is you again, they're talking all of this stuff, but you really don't know if that is true. They're talking it for you guys. Yeah. They're saying it for you because they want to impress the men that are in the room. And so like, embarrassing. And then they're lying to themselves. <laughs> so like the same guy that we used to hold on the pedestal because he was 13 when he got some, his whole model through high school was whenever I get with a chick, I do everything with her. So when the next dude gets her and he tells me about what he did, I can always say, yep, but she didn't do this. She didn't do this, but she did this to me. She did. <laughs> but think about it as an adult. You guys put a man on a pedestal because he was molested. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. sexually violated. And yeah. that affects the way he carries out the rest of his life because he was 13. But they don't, men don't see it as violation. They see it again. Oh man, you got some, cause you have some parents that take their young men to have oh, sex yeah. with women, right? You know, they don't see it as a violation. It is. They don't see that. You're setting your child up. That's yeah. trafficking. You're setting yeah. your child up for um, unhealthy relationships for the rest of their lives. Camila, I'm so sorry. I'm so excited that you were here with us today. Can you do me a favor? Can you tell yes. everybody how to find you and how they can reach out to you for your services. Yes. Well, um, you can contact me on my website at um, www.flavorsofpleasure.com. And I'm also on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. And so you can DM me or ask me a question and I will get back with you. If you, if you're interested in booking a session with me, you can just go to my website and do so as well. Thank you so much for being here. The number one question I had do you watch couples have sex and walk wow. them through it? I it was in my it, it was in my DMs. They want to know. Wow. <laughs> right. I have been hired to do so. And again, it's more of a it is still in the coaching capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have done that virtually as well as like in person if necessary, depending on what it is. But I am not involving myself with the couple at so all. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. So you ever you so you sat back and watched. So you telling me if you 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 you've been in the in and watched a couple have sex and never wanted to join in? No, I, I don't have sex with my clients. Everything is strictly professional. No, so it has. It, I have no desire to do so. My job that's is here to that's help. Men them. can't do. I, I don't know that's a man that can do. She probably can teach a man how to. I, I say milk it out of him. Right. Like, the, how to squirt? How to how to get it out? Again, it, it's various different reasons why you know they have me there or what have you, whatever is going on with them. But like, no, there is no desire whatsoever. I mean, I'm always turned on. So it's not, it's not like, oh, they're doing this. And it's just, you know, I turn my cell phone. So I'm always turned on. But I'm just saying, like, I don't need to have sex with clients that I'm working with. Couples? I don't have that. Is, huh? is this black couples? It's all couples. I, I've, I've had a few and I've had also, you know, other races as well. Yes. <laughs> okay, Ms. David, thank you so much. It was so awesome that you were here. Thank you. If you want to have a session with her, hit my girl up. She's the truth. Thank you. See me in a session. Welcome to Cherry's world. Across the world. Welcome to Cherry's world. Across the world. Welcome to Cherry's world.